Yeah, tax and spend used to be the mantra of the Democrats. Now it's print and spend. Write it down. I uh, coined it just now for you. They say that borrow, borrow, borrow like there's no tomorrow because it's Obama and Hoyer and Reed and Pelosi. You know that gang. They run up a bill and then they apply for a credit card without any credit. You think you could get a credit card if you were bankrupt? No, but if you were Nancy Pelosi, you'd print the credit card. You get it? So it's print and spend. Michael Savage said it tonight. Print and spend. You'll hear it tomorrow on Russia show. You know, I came up with a phrase years ago called compassionate conservative. Bush stole it. You say, oh, come on, you didn't create it. Yes, I did. For years I ran compassionate conservative conventions. The Bushies stole it, then they wouldn't even talk to me. I tried to save McCain in the last debate. I said, use this tonight, John. Use it. Trickle up poverty, John. Remember I created that phrase? I coined it. And I said, all you got to do is get up there tonight, John. And when Obama gives the soft shoe and the double talk and the I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, uh, all you got to do is smile, Reagan-like, and say, you know, Senator, we've heard all of that before, and huh, I know what it's called. It's called trickle up poverty. That would have been the end of Obama. We would have had McCain. I don't know that it would have been much different, frankly, because Bush bankrupted the country with a trillion dollars in uh, debt, primarily contracting jobs for the endless war in Iraq. And so Obama came along saying he'd clean up the mess, and he ran it up to a $3 trillion debt. That's how you solve a problem if you're a Democrat or liberal who never worked for a living. You know, 25 years ago, there was a uh, debt ceiling fight, a debt ceiling fight that led to the historic Graham-Rudman Act that required balanced budgets. You hear this? And Obama said he'd have a balanced budget, and you people don't understand what he's doing to you with Nancy Pelosi? I mean, go watch The Sopranos. You'll know what they're doing. They took over the sporting goods store, and they're selling out all of the uh, uh, sporting goods, and they're running up credit on the credit cards in the store, taking uh, first-class flights, and the store is emptying out, and they're moving the barriers forward to make you think there's still goods left in the store. It's astounding to me how they get away with it. How? With their friends in the newspaper business, how did they get away with it? So, what do you want me to do about it? You think I can change anything? I can't. I cannot change it. Sure, throw them out in 2010. A lot of good it'll do you. By then, it'll be too late. If you threw every Democrat out, which you should do, so you'll get the Republicans who'll swear that they're altar boys. Wait, they're all cleaning up their act. they got halos now, the Republicans. The very same people who gave us Bush and a trillion dollars in debt, suddenly they're polishing their halos. They're all altar boys and they're deacons in the church, and they're going to come out, elect us, and you have balanced budget, smaller government. The same old nonsense that you heard coming out of the mouth of Newt Gingrich for years. And what are you going to get? You're going to get the same you-know-what. You're going to get the same you-know-what. Yeah, that's why I'm an independent conservative. That's why I'm a heret heretic under, uh, I'm a heretic amongst her heretics, as the New Yorker said about me. A party of one, and proud of it. I'm not a Republican. I'm a party of one. One man's opinion. You don't like it? Don't listen to the show.